So I picked up this uh, Molly 2. We got an incredible deal at a garage sale. And, uh, just got a bunch of stuff with it. So it's got some nice features. I understand, you know, the, the packs are made, the pack frames are made of plastic. And they break, I've seen them break. Um, but I did get a Generation 2, a Gen 2 pack frame a friend of mine gave me. And apparently those are more sturdy, so I'll be switching that over because I really like this um, this, this type of system. Um, it's just tried and true. You see it everywhere. You see it commercial and professional packs, and um, it just uh, you know it just makes sense. Um, I took the two side pouches off. That was a little bit excessive, and uh, it came with the uh, sleeping bag, kind of haversack pouch, a radio bag, came with a wool blanket. A heavyweight puller fleece, a medium weight puller fleece, uh, canteen pouch, um, oh, and a brand new ram poncho still has a tag on it. So all that for eleven dollars. It's a deal, of, deal of the year for sure. But anyways, this is what I'm going to experiment with today. We got a wool blanket inside this uh, Flectarn half shelter. Um, I've kind of put this off a little bit because they're not really that big. They're, you, you know, it, uh, you're not a lot, a lot of cover if you want to use this as a lean-to, which is too bad because, uh, to me, this is by far the best half shelter uh, piece of piece of material fabric out there that I've ever seen. It's just, um, it's really beefy uh, hardware on there. Um, it's thick, it's durable, but it just doesn't have. I mean, if it had just six six inches more, um, then it, you could really kind of look into it being as a uh, as a lean to like some of the other half shelters. It's uh, it's kind of like the uh, the standard wool blanket has to be six inches too short. Um, all the militaries in the world trying to kill each other, but they all agree on that a soldier should have a blanket that's six inches too short. So, at any rate, I'm gonna give this a try. Let's see how this goes. And I'm just going to kind of do some scouting and uh, seeing what's kind of moving through here. Um, I camped this area last uh, early, very early spring, late fall. Um, I did a video of this one uh, titled something uh, debris shelter or something like that. This is the debris shelter. And uh, probably needs some modifications. So I'm going to just check and see what kind of, uh, of a ground blind this will offer. Um, Right now the wind's in my back and there's an open area that way, so I may not end up seeing too much. But uh, you know, when you get up every morning, you're hunting, you get up, first thing you do, what is the wind doing? And that determines which, which way you go. Um, so if you walk a loop, you, you can reverse the loop or go this way on the loop, you know, counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on what the wind is doing. So, uh, so probably for easterly winds, if I'm getting east winds, this would be a good place for me to consider. So we'll see, we'll see what's up. Okay, well this probably looks like a decent sized pack, but there's, uh, you know, as it is, insulation always takes up volume. And uh, it's still 40 degrees at night here, so. Um, what I got here. Here's a shelter system. I'll lay that out so you can see it better. Then I got the nice little blanket here, another thrift store. Fine, this is heavy weight. And unlike military blankets, this is a full blanket, covers you all the way. So. I got food and water. I keep my food bag separate. I don't keep food inside my pack because I want my pack to smell like food. So if you know something, you know, bear came along, I can throw the throw the food on the ground and hopefully walk out of there unscathed. Like, you know, distracting. Maybe that's maybe that's a, a tactic that I get lucky with. 
it's uh, it's better than nothing. But then also too, um, it just keep, helps keep me uh, focused on where it's at and uh, where I'm going to put it at at night. Um, you know, generally I only take as much as I eat before I go to sleep, uh, so I got nothing left over. Um, generally when I hunt, I go, I do morning, evening, sleepover, and then do a morning. So I do like three diurnal cycles there, um, and then I go refresh. That's generally how I do things. Um, I don't have to get in the truck and go drive far away to be, in, you know, be way out there. I live way they out there, so I just walk out my door and and I'm in the back country. So um, one thing I want to try this. I got this. These are called pillows. What is it? It's a mosquito net. Okay, it goes inside a tent. I think maybe even a bunk or something. Um, it says uh, U.S. Army uh, Skeeter tent. So a dollar for this heavy duty weight. Mosquito tent. So um, I'm, I'm going to be running that with this uh, Fleck Torn half shelter. Um, I got a cheapo um, a fake uh, Fleck Torn poncho. I'm going to use this as a bivy, bivy system or to keep my firearm dry. And I got a decent weight wool sweater. <laughs> some elk. Yep, some canned elk. Um, I got uh, long johns. You need those at this time of year for sure. This is my, uh, you know, my 10 C's, my fire kit, compass, things like that. It's uh, an AK-47 magazine pouch, East German, brand new Ridgeline setup. Um, I use these uh, uh, these mesh uh, face nets. They're for hunting, but I, they're great uh, just to keep mosquitoes off. So I mean, if you got on gloves and long sleeves. Um, all that's really left exposes your face. That's all you really need for mosquitoes. Um, so I always got that. Um, and I got a little fleece blanket just in case. Cause it's, I'm probably going to get cold tonight. Um, and here I got my, uh, this is my stove kit, stove and coffee kit with some cordage. That's a real nice feature right there. And then for, uh, I got so many different pieces of cook kit, I just kind of, you know, put them together based on what, what I'm doing that particular situation. But, uh, you know, this aluminum pot continues to be the most used one I got. It's just a cheap aluminum. It's lightweight. And uh, I generally don't cook in it. I use it for my coffee. But, but this thing is just, I mean, I got all kinds of great kits, you know, but this thing I just keep taking. I use it at home every day. Uh, and then I got this uh, this Billy Can uh, Zebra Pod, I think they're called. Um, I hated it at first. You know, I, had, I had put a little modification on it. But I'm actually using it at home. And I, now I can, like, cook rice in it and put my vegetables in there. And I see the value in that. And uh, I actually use it more at home in my home kitchen. Um, and then this little MSR cup. Um, you know, the thing with these is, this is such a thick handle, it doesn't cool off quick, you know. This little thin wire bale can sit like that on the heat, and then, uh, you know, it's cool pretty quick. This thing takes a while to burn it, lays right like that. So this is not a bush pot. It can be used for one, but I actually think it's better just at home. And, uh, you know, if I want a good bush pot, then I'm going to pull out my Pathfinder bush pot. But uh, this will work good for what, we're, what I'm doing today. So, uh, you know, that's pretty much my kit. I thought this half shelter was could be a little bit wider. Um, it's not a very deep lean-to here, but uh, not too bad. Got my room.
just drops down. Not too bad at all. This bag stays attached. So when you open this up, you want to be kind of gentle. Don't, don't go like ripping it out of there. Not bad, not bad at all. Need to let that cook slow. So anyways, I've been carrying this uh, SC6 around for uh, about five months. And uh, pretty much every day. Uh, the funny thing about it is I only just used it the other day. So it's been a great prop. That's one thing it's good for. But uh, I'm not knocking a knife. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a shot at myself right there actually. Um, generally, when I get a new knife, I like to skin something with it. It kind of breaks it in and you, and you create a relationship with the knife and stuff. And I bought this back in spring about five months ago for bear season thinking I was going to skin a bear with it. And uh, I never got a bear. So it just kind of threw me off mentally. Um, when I get something like from Pathfinder, Dave Canterbury's Pathfinder knives like this, you know, I got a beaver, I skinned a beaver with it. Um, I've gotten uh, two other knives from him and it's like I get them in, in the mail and the next day I literally get fill attack. So it really got me spoiled in that regard and um, I'll, I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm, I'm afraid to not buy something before hunting season because that, uh, it's just a, a good luck token or whatever. But uh, I'm going to use this more. I use um, I used it the other day to clear out an area for my trail cam set, and um, it's you know it's it's a good knife. I mean it's just sturdy. I can tell you that it rides well. I've lived with it for five months. I can talk about it from that point of point of view. But um, you know, handles dirty. <laughs> so, but at any rate, um, it did just fine. So I'll talk more about it when I got something to say about it, other than the fact that I've just been living in with it for five months. And in case you're also wondering, well, yeah, you always see me carrying it, I never use it. It's kind of a joke, you know. But anyway, but, uh, just some stuff I'll be talking about in the future.
Well, that was a good meal. I want to thank you for the gift of elk. And I want to uh, thank you for being on my side and watching out for me and wanting to see me win. Thanks again for the gift. This is wonderful. Okay, here's my uh, bed roll setup. It's got this wool blanket and this uh, this knockoff of a lightweight plectarm rain poncho. So I kind of work if it's a bivy. I'll just throw it over the top. And um, you got the things I need in the night: the bear spray, flashlight. And uh, the firearm. So it, uh, not much to see now, except the sky. It's morning. Okay, so I'll focus on this intersection right here. Um, some things going on in this corner. You can see the stitching, that's a 
That's a heavy duty grommet right there. So there's buttons everywhere. And then here's the pocket. Okay, well, now that I have this uh, ridge line established, I like the way that looks, so I'm going to go ahead and clear out this area and set up the uh, shelter. Okay, so I'm dealing with this, uh, this uh, U.S. Army mosquito net. And it uh, has these tie-outs. It would seem convenient, but they're the way they're spaced and patterned. Um, it's just not conducive to a ridge line. It, it, you don't get a uh, you don't get a line of tie-outs going straight across or anything really too uniform. Um, I think this was for a bunk, maybe. So I'm finding out that uh, you know these are pretty much worthless. Yeah, you know, I had to give it a try because they're there, but they just did not work out. So I'm going to a system here that I use for uh, um, my uh, net, my net camo for hunting, and uh, it's just these uh, relatively lightweight, cheapo aluminum clamps uh, that I've painted, and uh, it's just really quick and easy. You know, set up, take down. Um, they, they're multifunctional. So I'm just going to use those for now and uh, continue setting this up. What I've done here to help hold this net in place is I just simply pulled it through the buttonhole and then the shelter itself has a tie off. And I just use the button as a, uh, as a toggle on each side. Okay, uh, you know, same stuff I had the other night, uh, you know, got a poncho, worked as a bivy and uh, moisture barrier. Um, I use blankets as pillows because a blanket's a lot of things, but a, a pillow is just a pillow. So, heavyweight wool sweater and a pretty decent weight uh, wool blanket there. Um, got the same rifle set up I've been carrying around. Getting to know that uh, piece of gear. Pathfinder canteen kit and bear spray. Oh yeah, and the SC2, so. But that's the knife I actually use.
Okay, so what I did here was uh, I was looking for a way to um, use this MSR stove with a canteen cup. That's what I did is just lashed the stick to the handle. It's counterbalanced. back here I can just move this how I want and if the wind uh, the wind starts getting a little too much I can pin that in place like that So anyway, tonight it's big beans, nothing, uh, nothing special. I can see that's already up a little high. Back it way down. There we go. Boiling already. Probably going to go in the bottom. Back it way off. There we go. Okay, so here's a better look. And I got that to keep it from swaying. All right, peanut butter sandwiches, cliff bar, some crackers, and a blue cupcake. I don't usually eat this stuff, but it came from a really good source. Considering the source, I think this will be just fine. Oh yeah, I have an apple. Anytime you can get the hydration that's required to digest food in the same food, you're doing pretty good. Apples, uh, raw potatoes, they got a lot of moisture in them, so it's just going to help you with, the, uh, <laughs> with your hydration issues. Tastes real good right now.
Nothing formal tonight. All right, let's do a knife test. SE6. Versus the Hostess Cupcake. Alright. Alright, well it opened that cellophane pretty good. Now we got to see the batoning. The effectiveness of batoning the SE6. All right. Pretty clean cut there. I don't see any damage to the blade. That was pretty good. Okay, so it's uh, it's about time to hit the rack. This is my camp. I got it all straightened up. I keep my pack ready to go if I have to grab it and run. I don't have any loose debris laying around. All my gear is stowed. So I got that poncho over the top of a wool blanket. And uh, I got my ammo pouch there to give elevation on that. That little blanket for a pillow, I can adjust that to however I, whatever comfort I need. And I got my bear spray, can of water, and, uh, and the camera bag. So I got a general direction how to get out of here in the dark. I keep these things in mind. And um, the night is coming on. And I think I'm about done filming for the day.